What's going on guys, Slowmonkey here, and today I'm bringing you my second installment to my Battlefield 4 Weapons Guide. Today I'll be going over the CBJ MS Personal Defense Weapon. Also, before I begin, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the poor frame rate in some of these clips. Bottom line, my computer was processing too much at a time when I was recording, therefore the clips may be distorted in some way, shape, or form. Now that I got that out of the way, let's go ahead and begin with a little background check on the weapon itself. The CBJ-MS is a submachine gun developed by a Swedish company under the name of Saab Vorfos Dynamics. And no, this is not the company related to the car manufacturer, although it developed another weapon that you Battlefield veterans out there may be well aware of, which is the Carl Gustav Rocket Launcher from Battlefield Bad Company 2. The CBJ-MS was first introduced in August of 2000 by a man named Bertel Johansson. The weapon had a variety of traits that made it unique from other standard PDWs of its time. First off, it could fire one of two different types of ammunition. For military purposes and in the case of BF4, the 65 by 25 mm CBJ cartridge is used, but in training environments or in the case of standard police usage, the barrel can be modified to fire 9 by 19 mm parabellum ammunition. Another benefit is that, on top of acting as a PDW, this weapon can also be used as an assault rifle or even a light support weapon thanks to its flexibility in magazine sizes, which can range from around 20 to 100 rounds. Last but not least, this weapon has the ability to fire at a muzzle velocity of 815 meters per second. To put that into perspective, that's enough to pierce a light armored vehicle. Obviously, DICE thought that could get a little ridiculous in a game environment, therefore they lowered that velocity to around 520 meters per second. Alright, so that concludes our history lesson on the weapon. Let's go ahead and get down to the gun stats. The CBJMS is only available under the Engineer Kit and is the fourth PDW you receive. It does a max damage of 22 at 12.5 meters or less, and that steadily declines until it hits its minimum damage of 12.1 at 55 meters or more. It has a relatively low fire rate for PDW, maxing out at only 700 rounds per minute. The only silver lining to this bleak fire rate is that it makes kick and recoil easier to manage. That is, if you're even aiming down sights at all. I'll get more to that in a second. This weapon is amongst a select group of PDWs with a magazine size of 51 rounds. And because it's slightly below average fire rate, one can fire a full magazine with this weapon non-stop for almost 4.5 seconds. To put that into perspective, the AK-12, which is what I did in the last episode, uh, can only hold a full magazine spray for two and three quarters of a second, so nearing around half the time of the CBJ. Now, the magazine reload time for this weapon is a bit on the long side, but there are worse in the PDW category. If you are looking to reload with bullets left in the mag, you will experience a 2.4 second reload time. If on the off chance you do unload all 51 bullets and have to reload an empty magazine, it should take around 3.3 seconds. But I mean, come on, it's 51 bullets. Unless you're the new Rambo of PDWs, you shouldn't have to spend over 3 seconds reloading this weapon. Next on the list is the aim down sights time, and honestly, I'm not really sure why I'm doing this. I mean, over the past few minutes we've kind of established that this is a spray and pray type weapon, and honestly, most PDWs will follow suit. But, because I'm such a nice guy, I'll go in and throw these stats in there anyway. ADS time while standing perfectly still is 0.4 seconds, but if you move just a little bit, watch out because that time doubles to 0.8 seconds. Now because this is a PDW, I'll go ahead and go over spread. The way I'll be describing spread goes as followed. I will be assuming that this is a continuous dump of your entire mag, meaning your finger will not let off the fire button until every round is shot. The minimum spread will be the distance of the crosshairs after the first round is shot, and the maximum will be after the last round is shot. Hopefully this will make more sense as I go through this episode. If you're perfectly still, your minimum spread will be 1 and your maximum spread will be 7. I don't care if you're standing, crouched, eating donuts, folding laundry, or even lying flat on the damn ground. Your minimum spread will be 1 and your maximum will be 7. Always. If you spray while on the move, which will most likely be the case, your minimum spread while standing will be 1.5 and your minimum spread while crouched or prone will be 1.25. Your maximum spread will again be 7 for all three stances. Recoil isn't too much of a concern when firing from the hip, but in the case of the CBJ, you will see a slight kick in the upwards direction. Now, I used the CBJ MS before I even checked the stats online, so I can honestly say that it came to me as a bit of a surprise when I discovered how many disadvantages it had compared to other PDWs. Reload time wasn't too much of an issue for me because I almost never reloaded with no bullets left in the mag, but I did end up losing a handful of gunfights thanks to the low fire rate of this weapon and the faster fire rate of the other weapon. 
And now, as I did in the previous episode, I will give you a weapon setup that worked best for me. For the optics, I had the most success when using the HD 33 sight, which I myself found a bit off. At first, you think that the Cobra, Coyote, or Reflex would be the top choice, but then you have to think about it in another manner. The only time you actually be aiming down sights is at medium ranges, and that's where the HD 33 shines. I mean, if you're up close, more than likely you're going to be firing from the hip, making the sight kind of pointless. The accessory is a pretty obvious choice. Uh, any of the laser sights will improve your hip fire accuracy by around 25%. So any of them, the green, red, the flashlight slash uh, laser sight, those will all work. Just remember with the flashlight laser sight, you're going to have to switch it to the laser sight instead of the flashlight if you want that hip fire accuracy bonus. And finally, we have the barrel attachment. I suggest using any of the suppressors for this. The ability to stay stealthy and remain off the radar is just too much to pass up on a PDW, especially when the majority of your engagements will be up close. Be weary though, as this will lower your bullet velocity, making ranged kills even harder, and it will also increase your spread by around 0.2. The few tips I can give you for this weapon is simply stay stealthy, avoid long range gunfights at all costs, and remember, flanking is your best friend with any PDW. Alright, so this concludes my second installment to my Battlefield 4 Weapons Guide. As always, please help support this video by dropping a like and commenting on what gun from the support kit you would like to see in next episode. Also, if you're new to my channel and want to see more weapons guides along with more Battlefield 4 gameplay, please subscribe. Until next time, I'm Slow Monkey, and good luck on the battlefield. The gun stats provided in today's episode can be found at simthick.com, where there are a variety of ways to research weapons from a handful of different games.